Hello everyone, back to today's video. We're going to have a look at whether next week's 10 days will today's video this will take us to around the 18th of January. So we're going into the second half of the month with this update. Now we've been talking about the um, potential for a sudden stratospheric warming event to take place uh, over North Pole in uh, around a couple of weeks' time. The GFS extended range been um, sort of playing around with that for a couple of days. There are a few hints within the G, uh, GFS ensembles as well that uh, we might get a bit of a warming, although actually the last two operational runs this morning of the GFS have backed off that idea a bit, but um, we're still seeing some signals within the ensembles. We're talking about sort of extended range output here, so there is a lot of uncertainty associated with it. I think we will get uh, a warming event at some point through the latter stage of January, possibly into start of February. Um, but exactly when that's going to occur, still a little bit of uncertainty about that. In the meantime, though, the next week to 10 days is looking increasingly unsettled as low pressure moves in off the Atlantic. And I'll talk you for everything that's going on uh, right now. So we'll start off having a look at the uh, stratosphere. This is how the GFS is predicting uh, stratospheric temperatures to uh, develop from the 16th of January onwards. It's the latest operational run of the uh, GFS. Now, where we've got these blue and purple colours, those are the cold temperatures at 10 HPA, which is one of the top layers of the uh, atmosphere in the stratosphere. We're looking to infiltrate brighter colours, so sort of yellows, oranges, and reds, into the stratosphere of the North Pole. We see have got a little bit of yellow around here um, over Siberia, so that's like a minor warming that's occurring on the 16th of January if the model is right over Siberia. That's not into the North Pole. The North Pole is sort of up over here. So we're looking to infiltrate yellows, oranges and reds into the North Pole. And if we get that, then we're having a sudden stratospheric uh, warming event. So this is uh, starting off on the 16th of January. This is how the uh, latest 6 o'clock run of the GFS is predicting things to develop. And you'll see that the, uh, the cold temperatures in the stratosphere are being put under a lot of pressure, we find uh, we really do start to uh, pull on that, uh, on those blue and purple colours, sort of um, elongate them, if you like, uh, over the pole. So we are having a minor warming occurring over the pole uh, as we go into around the 22nd, 23rd of January. But we aren't getting those uh, red colours appearing, the oranges and reds appearing uh, and moving into North Pole, such as we saw on the two operational runs of the uh, GFS yesterday, uh, the midday run, and then uh, again yesterday evening, 6 o'clock uh, in the evening run, uh, also did that. So... Um, GFS operations have backed off a little bit, but the idea is still there within the ensemble. So this is ensemble member number 13, showing really quite a significant warming taking place in the stratosphere over North Pole by the 24th of uh, January. You can see that by those orange colours uh, appearing just to the north of Scandinavia. They'd be moving in towards the North Pole. And then also ensemble member number 17, uh, is going for a very uh, significant warming. This is a uh, very significant warming over Russia and Siberia, but if we could go on any further, that will very quickly start to infiltrate in towards the North Pole uh, as well. So the hints are there that we are going to get some sort of major warming event the final week of January. I mean, bearing in mind, we're only at the 8th of January today, so this is all sort of two weeks away, um, something like that. So it's a very long way away, and uh, as with any uh, model output, that is at that sort of distance. There is going to be a lot of uncertainty about it. So at the moment, we're just looking at the hints and the signals it may not come to anything, but I've got a feeling we probably will get this sudden stratospheric warning. It's just a matter of when it happens. If it happens too late, probably going to be about all the impact uh, more for spring, actually, March and April. If uh, we don't get the stratospheric warming, let's say, let's say we get a stratospheric warming, sudden stratospheric warming around the end of February, then that would impact things for March and April and probably give us quite a coldish uh, early and middle part of spring. Um, so, if we want this to impact the winter, then we really need to get on with it and uh, get this stratospheric warming at some point through January. Uh, so, we just have to wait and see how it plays out. I've got a feeling we will get a major warming at some point in the next few weeks, but whether it's in January or whether we've got to wait into, into February, just have to wait and see on that. But the hints are still there 
imagery fs uh this is the central England temperature from hadley uh provisional up to the 6th of uh january so uh provisionally we're standing at 4.5 degrees an anomaly of around a degree above average has been quite a mild start to january although these temperatures um the temperature will be ticking down a little bit i think over the next few days so i was suspect in a few days time we'll look at this again and we'll probably be uh have a, a anomaly that isn't deviating too far from average at all has been a reasonably mild opening to uh the year however 500 millibar height anomalies broken down into uh, 500 millibar height anomalies uh, from the ECMWF and the GFS uh, coming up uh, next. So this is for the next 7 to 10 day uh, time frame. Uh, takes us up to around the 18th of uh, January. This is from the Penn State University uh, website. We've got the ECMWF here on the top and the GFS, which have a look at in a moment, is on the bottom. 500 millibars, 80,000 feet, is an area in the, at in the atmosphere where high pressure and low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream running above. But let's extrapolate to low pressure and red to high pressure. So the ECMWF has a lot of high pressure to our north. All of this red up here is really quite an extensive signal uh, for blocking and uh, maybe for northern blocking. So even without um, any sort of uh, stratospheric warming occurring over the North Pole, it does look as though we're doing reasonably well, certainly on the East End UF solution anyway, for uh, quite a lot of high pressure to be up over the pole. Uh, now for us, we are placed very close to this really deep trough that uh, we've got just here. I need to change the colour. So uh, we've got this really deep trough just here around the UK, and a strong jet stream uh, on a southerly track as well. So on the cold side of the jet stream, uh, doing something rather like that uh, with the flow and with the jet. So that's turning increasingly cold and unsettled, actually. This blocking that we've got up here over pole, that would be pushing quite cold air down into this trough of low pressure around the UK. And also adding to that is a flat is the fact that we are on the cold side of the jet under that uh, trough. So that looks as though for the 7 to 10 day time frame, it's very unsettled, but probably also quite cold. And there would be some wintry potential in with that, especially the northern parts of the country. The GFS is very similar. It's a little bit further north and centrally located with this trough, so not quite as cold. The jet stream isn't digging down to ourselves quite as much as we see uh, with the East End. Yeah. But nevertheless, it's still pretty chilly and it's still very unsettled looking signal as well. That's a proper deep trough that's been placed over top of the UK at that point. And still, again, we have uh, quite a signal for high pressure to be to our north as well. So it looks like um, we are setting up some very high pressure over the Arctic that is forcing this trough and the jet stream uh, to go further south. And that does, at the very least, it has some wintry potential uh, coming through with it, I would have thought. Uh, so, GFS temperature representation ensembles. Next, we're looking at uh, market raisin in uh, Lincolnshire today. So, the red line here is the 30 year upper air temperature average. We're going to be mild on average over the next couple of days, but we won't feel that mild because we've got a continental flow. So, actually, <coughs> excuse me, actually, it could be quite cold down on the surface, but aloft in the atmosphere. It's actually going to be relatively mild. Uh, we go through to the second half of the week. That's the middle and second half of the week. Just their dates are on the bottom of the chart, uh, by the way. Uh, then we run too far from uh, the long-term average, a little bit above average. And we will notice that uh, warmer feel, I think, for, for a few days uh, later on this week. Particularly around Wednesday, possibly into Thursday before it starts to turn cooler. Uh, in the second half of the month, so this is 15th of January just here, beyond that, in the second half of the month, we see we are going quite cold actually, we're going uh, colder than average 
through this period. So it does look as though um, we are going to see the temperatures dipping uh, as we go into the second half of the month, the middle of um, the second half of the month. And that's probably associated with that deep trough that we saw on the height anomaly flow charts moving southwards along with the jet stream. For precipitation, a reasonable amount of dry weather coming up for the rest of this week. Then the rainfall spikes are coming back over the weekend and into next week, turning very unsettled, actually. Some quite big rainfall spikes up there. And perhaps not all of them rain. Maybe some of those spikes um, indicating snow potentially as well. Uh, surface temperatures for market rays are looking like this. So we're beginning at around 4 or 5 degrees Celsius. It's going to turn a little bit milder over the next couple of days. Uh, um, just keep the temperatures very close to where we are really up to the weekend. Maybe a little bit above today's, but probably 6, 7 degrees, something like that. Uh, early next week, though, turning colder uh, then. The temperatures look as though they're dipping uh, by a few degrees as we go into uh, the course of next week. So around a week's time will be quite cold and there might be some wintry potential too. There is an increasing risk of night frost coming back as well through the course of uh, next week. So I think next week is potentially looking colder uh, than this week. Temperature anomalies look like that. The 8th to 16th of January generally coming out a little bit colder than average for much of the UK and Ireland. Spain and Portugal is included in that as well. Anywhere from France, eastwards coming out with milder than average temperature anomalies. Precipitation anomalies from the 8th to 16th of January average to a little bit uh, wetter than average for much of the country but a bit drier than average for northern and western parts of Scotland. This is uh, the latest uh, UK Met Office model runs. I've been uh, showing you this a little bit over the videos just recently. This has always been strong with that Scandinavian high. I'll just talk a little bit about the Scandinavian high that we've been talking about, which is this area of high pressure up here over uh, Scandinavia. Um, so this is for Friday, uh, when more or less we are bringing in an easterly flow, although it is a very weak easterly flow and it's not overly cold either. But uh, by Friday, more or less, that high pressure over Scandinavia has won the battle. Uh, but just about holding on to Saturday, but by Sunday, low pressure is starting to move in. So um, very subtly, it looks like the UK Met Office model has shifted a little bit towards the Atlantic uh, winning this out. This is a very big ridge that we've got here over Scandinavia though. So even now, I still wouldn't be totally ruling out the chance of some easterlies getting going over the weekend and into next week. But at this stage, it looks like quite a low risk probability and actually, it does look as though the Atlantic and um, these blue and purple colours around Greenland indicating low pressure up there. It looks like that's going to be the driver as we're moving into the middle part of the month. But do bear in mind, it may be Atlantic-based air, but it is going to be quite cold air as uh, as well. This is how the uh, GFS is looking. So again, on Friday, more or less, that high pressure over Scandinavia has won the battle at that point. It is in control. But only very briefly, this is Saturday, with low pressure started heading from off the Atlantic. That's been cloud and outbreaks rain. And by Sunday, 14th of January, and then through to Monday, 15th of January, you'll see low pressure is increasingly moving in from off the Atlantic, pushing this high pressure back to uh, west parts of Russia. I say it's not inconceivable that the, uh, the models are too strong with this low pressure and in the end it'll be the high pressure of Scandinavia that uh, is in control of uh, the weather but uh, at the moment model runs are seeing this low pressure uh, winning out over weekend into next week however this is still quite cold air that's coming in with this low pressure so this takes us to uh, Tuesday uh, next week and uh, the low pressure broken through, obviously, but it's on a southerly uh, track. The jet stream here is on a southerly track. The low pressure also is on a southerly track. That's doing going in that sort of direction. And so we are pulling quite cold air from the north into this low pressure. Certainly for northern parts of the country, sort of on a high anomaly flow chart, certainly for northern parts of the country, there would be a substantial risk, I think, early next week of, uh, of snow. And we're talking about Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England, possibly parts of Wales, maybe down towards the Midlands too. I wouldn't be ruling out some quite uh, significant 
snowfalls coming through during the early part of next week. Further south of that, likely to be rain. We run up towards day 10, looking very, very unsettled. Low pressure coming through the country, bringing heavy outbreaks of rain. We're still on the cold side of the jet stream as well. The black line here is a jet stream. That's to the south of us. So as we import cold air into uh, these areas of low pressure, certainly for northern parts of the country anyway, there is a risk of um, further snow, I would have thought, through the course of next week. Really, there's a boundary from uh, there. So anywhere on the northern side of that boundary, on the northern side of the low pressures, is going to be uh, at risk, anyway, of getting some snow. On the southern uh, side of that uh, boundary, you're mostly going to get rain. Of course, it's a little way off to determine where that boundary will be, and it's not impossible that the boundary might be shifted uh, further southwards. But it looks cold and unsettled. Very unsettled uh, as we go through into next week. We've gone a little bit beyond day 10. This takes us to Friday the 19th of uh, January when, again, we're putting more cold air into these trusses, low pressure, turning wind into the north. So there is wintry potential, not from the east, but there is wintry potential with these uh, northwesterly winds through the course of uh, next week. Finally, the SMBF looking like this. So, again, for Friday, the high pressure over Scandinavia is more or less in control of the weather. As goes through into the weekend, however, low pressure from off, from off the Atlantic increasingly taking over as this high pressure begins to recede back into western parts of Russia. It's a very large area of high pressure, though. If these models are overstating the strength of this low pressure, the trough, to the south of Greenland. If the models are overstating that, then uh, actually it'll be the high pressure over Scandinavia that might become increasingly influential and get those winds into the east. It's still just too far away to have good confidence in this. The moment it looks like we won't get the wind properly into the east and set up a proper easterly, but it still needs watching because it's a large area of high pressure that we've got there over Scandinavia. So we go off into next week and the low pressure has taken over from the Atlantic. But again, the jet stream's on a southerly track. We're doing something like that. Uh, with the jet, so we're importing cold air into this low pressure, bringing a risk of heavy rain to the south, but also potentially snow to northern parts of the country. And then we go up into the middle of next week and we find that low pressure doing something quite unusual. So the centre of the low pressure at midnight on Monday is just there to the south of Iceland. Uh, midnight on Tuesday, the centre of the low pressure is off the west coast of Ireland, so it's slipping southwards, which is quite unusual. Remember, these areas of low pressure normally are going southwest to northeast uh, in that sort of direction. They're normally doing something like that. So to send these low pressures in that direction, that is unusual. It tells us again that the atmosphere and the jet stream uh, are behaving abnormally this winter. So by midnight on Wednesday, the centre of that low pressure is actually down here somewhere uh, in sort of southern France and Mediterranean. And that's allowing us again to pull down quite cold air uh, from the north. Notice heights remain relatively high to our north and northeast. So we haven't totally lost that Scandinavian high, uh, even then, uh, middle of next week. That's how we finish up on uh, day 10, which is Thursday, 18th of January. It's quite a messy picture, but there could be a bit of a snow event going on there. There's uh, low pressure, probably a weather front uh, in that sort of position. Uh, maybe that's a little bit wrong. So the weather front will probably be in uh, that sort of position, I would have thought. And uh, within this trough, there's quite cold air as well, especially to the north and the east of this front. So uh, you would expect the risk maybe of some snow there. Uh, on day 10, maybe even to, to uh, southern parts of the country. That's a very long way off, and it is uncertain. But it's just the idea that next week there is wintry potential uh, coming through. So what we're facing for this week is a lot of quiet weather. Actually, not going to be a great deal going on. We're in a bit of a no-man's land uh, this week. Eventually, by Friday, that high pressure over Scandinavia just about wins the battle. But only very briefly. I mean, over the weekend, inside of next week, the low pressure moves in off the Atlantic. That sends us uh, unsettled, perhaps for a time over the weekend, 
little bit stormy as well. And then next week looks unsettled, but also cold as these low pressures take increasingly southerly track. We go on to the cold side of the jet stream and there is wintry potential with those low pressures next week, particularly so for northern parts of the country. The only caveat about all of this is the strength of that high pressure over Scandinavia. It is possible, uh, although quite unlikely at the moment, it is still possible that that high pressure over Scandinavia might be stronger than these models are expecting. If it is, then we may actually go more easterly over weekend and into next week. But I think at the moment it appears we've got agreement for increasingly unsettled but cold weather over weekend and into the start of next week as well. Right, that's brought you up to date. Uh, thanks so much for watching and uh, bye for now.